Hello everyone in this video, I will be recapping the chapter 8 to 10 of the manhwa called Eternal Supreme. Lan Fei strode confidently forward, his chest swelling with pride and determination. With each step, his energy surged, a palpable force propelling him forward. As he approached Yun Xiao, a radiant glow enveloped him, casting him in an aura of power and might. It was the unmistakable brilliance of primordial qi, a testament to his newfound status as a warrior. Behind Lan Fei, Du Feng's voice rang out, filled with urgency and desperation. His plea for vengeance echoed in the air, a stark reminder of past grievances. Yet, his discomfort was evident, his movements hindered by the burden of bandages wrapped tightly around his crotch. Beside him, Luo Jie seethed with anger, his features contorted with fury as he bristled with pent-up rage. Yun Xiao's gaze fell upon Lan Fei, his expression a mix of skepticism and disdain. He couldn't help but mock the ostentatious display of power, likening Lan Fei's glow to that of a luminous pearl. His attention briefly shifted to Han Bai and Chen Zhan, assessing their injuries with a sense of relief upon confirming they weren't fatal. However, beneath the surface, a simmering rage smoldered, his eyes betraying his murderous intent. Lan Fei recoiled at Yun Xiao's taunt, his bravado faltering momentarily in the face of such disdain. With a tremor in his voice, he issued a threat, his words dripping with malice as he demanded submission from Yun Xiao. The prospect of exacting revenge for Du Feng's suffering fueled his resolve, driving him to assert his dominance over his adversary. Yun Xiao's response was swift and cutting, his tone laced with cold fury. A surge of energy emanated from him, though lacking the overt power of primordial qi, it carried an undeniable force that sent shivers down the spines of all present. Lan Fei felt a sense of dread creeping over him an inexplicable fear gripping his heart as he struggled to comprehend the sudden shift in power dynamics. Summoning his courage, Lan Fei brandished his sword, the weight of his actions settling heavily upon him. With a furious roar, he launched himself at Yun Xiao. The inexplicable sense of fear gripped Lan Fei like a vice, sending shivers down his spine and setting his nerves on edge. It was a sensation so overwhelming that he feared if he didn't act decisively, he might lose his courage altogether. Standing there, Facing Yun Xiao, it felt as though he was on a small boat tossed amidst stormy waves, teetering on the brink of disaster. With a fierce determination, Lan Fei pushed aside his doubts, focusing all his strength and resolve into his arms. He knew he had to act swiftly and decisively to overcome the looming threat before him. Yun Xiao's nod of approval only served to fuel his determination further as he steeled himself for the confrontation ahead. In response to Lan Fei's attack, Yun Xiao casually drew a black iron sword effortlessly holding it in a defensive stance that deflected Lan Fei's assault. The sight incited fury in Lan Fei, his face flushing red as he doubled down on his attack, infusing his strikes with the power of primordial qi. The clash of their swords rang out violently, sparks flying as the force of their collision reverberated through the air. Lan Fei's attack seemed formidable, cracking Yun Xiao's palms and sending him staggering backward. Despite the impact, Yun Xiao managed to maintain his footing, his balance unwavering even as he retreated several steps. However, the black iron sword he wielded bore the mark of their conflict, a deep cut marring its surface. The scene unfolded in disbelief before the onlookers, their wide-eyed stares rooted to the ground in astonishment. Lan Fei's shock mirrored that of his companions, his mind reeling at the unexpected turn of events. How could Yun Xiao, a mere apprentice warrior, block his attack with such ease? The realization dawned on Lan Fei that perhaps there was more to Yun Xiao than met the eye. Could he have unlocked his chakras without manifesting primordial qi? As warm blood filled his mouth, Yun Xiao couldn't help but chuckle, a sense of satisfaction permeating his demeanor. Despite the oddity of his current situation, the thrill of battle coursed through him, invigorating him with a sense of purpose. His laughter echoed in the air. Yun Xiao stood tall. His sword raised defiantly as he beckoned Lan Fei forward with a challenge. His arrogance was palpable, evident in the smug curve of his lips as he taunted his opponent. Lan Fei's fury surged, his face flushed with anger at the audacity of Yun Xiao's provocation. With a deep breath, he suppressed the shock reverberating through his mind, channeling his rage into a determined resolve. Raising his own sword, Lan Fei summoned forth a torrent of primordial qi, the energy crackling along the blade as he launched himself at Yun Xiao. The passing cloud slash technique, honed through relentless training as an apprentice warrior, was now his to wield as a true one-star warrior. With a defiant shout, 
Lan Fei charged forward, his intent clear, to strike down his adversary with overwhelming force. The onlookers behind Lan Fei watched in stunned disbelief, their eyes widening as the clash unfolded before them. Du Feng's excitement bubbled over, his shrill voice cutting through the tension as he identified Lan Fei's technique. Yet, amidst the anticipation, Yun Xiao remained composed, his voice calm as he began to offer unsolicited advice. As Lan Fei surged toward him, Yun Xiao's words pierced through the chaos, his commentary on the passing cloud sword technique a direct challenge to Lan Fei's skill. The insult stoked the flames of Lan Fei's fury, threatening to overwhelm him as he struggled to maintain his focus. With a snarl, he dismissed Yun Xiao's words, his determination unwavering as he pressed on with his attack. The blade descended with blinding speed, aimed to strike down Yun Xiao with lethal precision. But in a swift and effortless motion, Yun Xiao countered, his own sword rising to meet the onslaught. With a casual flick of his wrist, he redirected the force of Lan Fei's strike, sending the glowing sword hurtling through the air until it embedded itself into the ceiling with a resounding thud. Yun Xiao's voice rang out, a quiet reminder of the lesson learned, count yourself lucky to have received my advice. The sudden silence that followed was deafening, the room frozen in shock at the unexpected turn of events. Lan Fei stood before Yun Xiao, his breaths ragged as he struggled to comprehend the defeat he had just suffered. Yun Xiao stood poised, his body trembling slightly from the rush of primordial qi surging through the blade into his veins. Despite the pain that threatened to overwhelm him, he remained steadfast, twisting his body into a peculiar stance that seemed to counteract the agony coursing through him. With a steely resolve, he prepared to face whatever came next. Meanwhile, Lan Fei stood frozen, his gaze fixed on his torn palms, oblivious to the danger looming before him. Without warning, Yun Xiao's foot lashed out, connecting with Lan Fei's face with a force that sent him hurtling backward, blood spewing from his mouth as he collided with the ground. The onlookers were stunned into silence, their minds unable to process the rapid turn of events. Their mouths gaped open in disbelief, muscles tensing in shock as they struggled to comprehend the unfolding spectacle. As Lan Fei regained his bearings, his mind raced to catch up with the chaos around him. It was only when a chilling sensation gripped his senses that he realized Yun Xiao's sword was perilously close to his groin. Panic surged through him as he grasped the dire situation, his legs trembling with fear as he confronted Yun Xiao's cold gaze. Filled with a mixture of shock and indignation, Lan Fei mustered his courage to confront his assailant. What do you think you're doing? You wouldn't dare, he spluttered, his voice wavering with a hint of desperation. Yun Xiao's expression remained impassive his eyes flashing with disdain as he retorted, Dare? Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. I'm trembling with fear, you see. Mockingly, he wobbled his hand, causing the blade to sway dangerously close to Lan Fei's vulnerable anatomy, eliciting a primal fear that permeated the air. Lan Fei's resolve crumbled as he faced the imminent threat, his legs quivering uncontrollably as the pungent scent of urine tainted the tense atmosphere. No. Please, don't, he pleaded his voice cracking with terror. Yun Xiao's gaze hardened, a cold gleam in his eyes as he refused to yield to Lan Fei's pleas. Yun Xiao said, I'm too lazy to settle the previous score with you, but you've injured Fatty Han and Skinny Chun this time, and even tried to kill me. Now, tell me, how am I going to swallow the resentment if I don't cut off your manhood? Please, I beg you. I'll do anything you say. Please be merciful. Lan Fei cried out, frightened out of his wits. After all, he was only a 15-year-old teenager, so his arrogance and courage were instantly gone at the prospect of losing his manhood. The dozens of students present, too, were all teenagers of apprentice warrior level. Although they had witnessed their boss, who was so lofty and mighty during normal times, lay wailing on the ground like a weakling and even peeing his pants, none of them thought of him a disgrace. Any man would be scared out of his wits in such a situation, especially when they stole glances at Du Feng and Luo Jia, their faces turned extremely pale and they all stood where they were, not daring to make a sound. Yun Xiao's words hung heavy in the air, his offer to spare Lan Fei's manhood in exchange for money slicing through the tension like a knife. Lan Fei's heart leaped at the lifeline dangled before him, a desperate hope blooming in the face of impending doom. Hastily, he reached for the storage ring on his finger, fingers fumbling in his urgency to remove it. But as panic seized him, the ring seemed to resist, clinging stubbornly to his finger despite his frantic efforts. With a glance that pierced through the crowd, 
Yun Xiao's demand sent shockwaves rippling through the onlookers. Each one hurriedly complied, their hands reaching for their own storage rings, eager to appease the ominous figure before them. As the rings were relinquished, Yun Xiao's gaze returned to Lan Fei, his demeanor cool and calculating. Trembling but emboldened by the prospect of escape, Lan Fei dared to voice his question, a glimmer of hope flickering in his eyes. Yet, before he could receive an answer, Yun Xiao's attention was drawn to a jade pendant hanging from Lan Fei's waist. His heart skipped a beat at the sight, and with a deft flick of his sword, the pendant was snatched from its resting place and into Yun Xiao's grasp. A flicker of surprise danced in Yun Xiao's eyes as he admired the intricate design of the pendant. Despite Lan Fei's protests, his grip on the precious heirloom tightened, a possessive gleam lighting up his gaze. Lan Fei's face paled at the sudden turn of events, his voice trembling with desperation as he pleaded for the return of the pendant. But Yun Xiao's cold glare bore into him, unwavering in its intensity. Panic surged through Lan Fei, his forehead slick with cold sweat as he implored Yun Xiao to understand the pendant's significance. It was not just a trinket, it was a cherished heirloom, a symbol of his family's legacy. To lose it would mean facing the wrath of his family, a fate too dire to contemplate. Yun Xiao's demeanor hardened as he raised his sword, his voice cutting through the tense atmosphere like a blade. The group of teenagers trembled in fear, their eyes darting anxiously between Yun Xiao and Lan Fei, awaiting his decision with bated breath. Lan Fei's expression darkened considerably, torn between his own desires and the well-being of those who had accompanied him. In his heart, the jade pendant held immeasurable value, a cherished heirloom passed down through generations. Yet, the weight of responsibility pressed heavily upon him as he considered the fate of the teenagers who looked to him for guidance. These youths were not just random acquaintances. They were the children of families intricately tied to the Lan family, some even direct descendants. To forsake them in favor of his own possessions would not only betray their trust, but also tarnish his reputation irreparably. The thought of condemning them to such a fate filled Lan Fei with a deep sense of shame and guilt. A momentary pause that seemed to stretch on infinitely until a voice broke through the silence. Boss. The cry rang out, breaking the stillness as one of the girls among them couldn't contain her urgency any longer. Lan Fei's expression tightened at the interruption, his features contorted with a mixture of anger and frustration. With a deep breath, Lan Fei finally spoke his voice resonating with authority despite the turmoil raging within him. He declared his decision, prioritizing the lives of his companions over his own possessions. Though his words carried a veneer of resolve, the shame burning in his cheeks betrayed the true depth of his sacrifice. As Lan Fei attempted to maintain an air of nonchalance, his humiliation was laid bare for all to see. The wetness seeping into his pants and the purple flush staining his complexion exposed the extent of his embarrassment. Yun Xiao's eyes narrowed, a flicker of something dark flashing across his gaze as he observed Lan Fei's feeble attempt at bravado. Without warning, he swung his sword with deadly precision, the blade slicing through the air like a bolt of lightning aimed directly at Lan Fei's throat. Caught in the grip of paralyzing fear, Lan Fei found himself ensnared by an invisible force, his body frozen in place as the icy tendrils of Yun Xiao's murderous intent pierced through him. In a desperate bid for self preservation, Lan Fei instinctively reached out, seizing the nearest girl and pulling her in front of him as a shield. The girl struggled against his grasp, her futile attempts to break free overshadowed by Lan Fei's superior strength. Helpless and terrified, she became an unwitting pawn in Lan Fei's desperate bid for survival. But just as the sword hovered perilously close to its target, Yun Xiao halted his advance with an abrupt movement. With a disarming smile, he revealed the jest behind his actions his words dripping with sarcasm as he granted them reprieve. The relief that washed over Lan Fei was quickly eclipsed by a surge of anger and humiliation. His lackey's silent reproach pierced through him like daggers, their disapproving stares fueling the flames of his fury. With a clenched jaw and blazing eyes, Lan Fei stormed out of Yun Xiao's dormitory, his heart heavy with resentment and indignation. He vowed never to set foot in that place again his pride wounded and his reputation tarnished by the events that had transpired. Yun Xiao's fingers deftly clasped the jade pendant, his eyes alight with anticipation as he examined it closely. With a satisfied smile, he confirmed its authenticity, identifying it as the coveted five-colored divine air stone. Swiftly, he stowed away the precious pendant, his expression shifting into a sneer as he addressed the empty space above him. 
It's about time for you to show yourself after looking for so long, he taunted, his voice laced with arrogance and triumph. The silence that followed was broken by a sudden disturbance from above as Jia Rong, cloaked in black attire, descended gracefully from the ceiling. As Jia Rong landed on the ground, his gaze locked onto Yun Xiao, a myriad of emotions swirling in his eyes. He regarded Yun Xiao with a mixture of disbelief and curiosity, his mind reeling from the events he had witnessed. Despite his initial intentions to confront Yun Xiao and extract the cure by force, Jia Rong now hesitated. The display of power he had witnessed left him wary and uncertain of his ability to overpower Yun Xiao. Despite being a mid-tier warrior, he harbored doubts about his chances of subduing Yun Xiao, let alone capturing him alive. Yun Xiao's casual inquiry snapped Jia Rong out of his reverie, prompting an automatic response as he relayed his findings. Maintaining a facade of composure, he explained the challenges he had faced in procuring the necessary ingredients, expressing regret at only being able to secure six sets due to the rarity of certain herbs. Yun Xiao accepted the report without hesitation, his tone dismissive as he instructed Jia Rong to hand over the herbs. However, his attention quickly turned to the injured Han Bai and Chen Zhan, indicating that they should be healed first. Jia Rong's initial compliance faltered at Yun Xiao's command, his expression darkening as he bristled at being ordered around. His frustration bubbled to the surface as he challenged Yun Xiao's authority, refusing to be treated as a subordinate. Unfazed by Jia Rong's defiance, Yun Xiao met his glare with a cold stare, issuing a blunt ultimatum. Jia Rong seethed with anger his frustration palpable as he grappled with the indignity of being ordered around by someone he considered beneath him. Despite his prestigious status as a mid-tier warrior and esteemed alchemist, he found himself reluctantly complying with Yun Xiao's demands. The weight of his own vulnerability in the face of Yun Xiao's power left him feeling powerless and humiliated. With a resigned sigh, Jia Rong begrudgingly bent over to inspect the injuries of Han Bai and Chan Zhun, his hands trembling with suppressed rage. Extracting two pale yellow pills from his ring, he administered them to the injured youths, his actions a begrudging acknowledgement of his debt to Yun Xiao. It's done, he declared curtly, his voice tinged with resentment as he turned to face Yun Xiao. Now, it's time for you to fulfill your end of the bargain. I've done everything you asked, and I won't be taking any more orders from you. Yun Xiao's response was a subtle blend of amusement and condescension, his words dripping with sarcasm as he taunted Jia Rong. The implication that Jia Rong would eventually beg to be commanded by Yun Xiao only fueled Jia Rong's frustration, prompting an outburst of anger. Enraged by Yun Xiao's insinuations, Jia Rong accused him of deceit, his voice filled with indignation. However, Yun Xiao's dismissive retort only served to exacerbate Jia Rong's fury, leaving him seething with resentment. As Yun Xiao nonchalantly produced a piece of paper and sent it flying towards Jia Rong, the force behind it took Jia Rong by surprise. Catching the paper with a mixture of apprehension and curiosity, Jia Rong's expression darkened as he read its contents. Though uncertain of its accuracy, he could discern enough to realize that Yun Xiao had not deceived him. With a heavy heart and a begrudging acknowledgement of Yun Xiao's integrity, Jia Rong conceded defeat. Despite his lingering resentment, he knew that he was indebted to Yun Xiao and that their agreement had been fulfilled. With a final glance of disdain, Jia Rong turned to leave his pride wounded but his honor intact. As Jia Rong made his way out, his steps heavy with a mixture of resentment and resignation, Yun Xiao's voice cut through the air with deliberate calmness. His words hung in the air, laden with an unsettling certainty that sent a shiver down Jia Rong's spine. The prescription can remove the toxin of both the Hell Wind Stone and Blood Fame Orchid from your body without leaving behind any side effects, Yun Xiao stated casually, his tone betraying a hint of amusement at the revelation but it was the next words that struck Jia Rong like a thunderbolt, freezing him in his tracks. The mention of the regression of his soul power sent a chill coursing through his veins, his body going rigid with shock. The realization that his very essence, the soul power that defined him as an alchemist, had been corroded by the toxic substances he had been exposed to was a bitter pill to swallow. Yun Xiao's words painted a bleak picture of the future, one where the road to recovery was fraught with insurmountable obstacles. The prospect of spending decades in a futile attempt to regain his former prowess weighed heavily on Jia Rong's mind, threatening to crush his spirit under its oppressive weight. The mention of a shortcut, however, sparked a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. But it was a fragile hope, one that seemed almost too good to be true. Jia Rong's skepticism bubbled to the surface, his voice trembling with uncertainty as he dared to question Yun Xiao's offer. Yun Xiao's response was swift and cutting, 
his words laced with disdain as he dismissed Jia Rong's doubts with a contemptuous sneer. The implication that he would stoop so low as to lie to someone like Jia Rong struck a nerve, stoking the flames of Jia Rong's indignation. Jia Rong's mind whirled with conflicting emotions, torn between disbelief and desperation. The allure of reclaiming his lost power in a mere fifty days was too tantalizing to ignore even if it meant placing his trust in someone as enigmatic and untrustworthy as Yun Xiao. With a heavy heart and a sense of trepidation, Jia Rong swallowed his pride and yielded to Yun Xiao's offer, his voice a shaky whisper as he beseeched Yun Xiao for reassurance. Yun Xiao's index finger rose, pointing assertively as he spoke, his voice carrying a cold, confident tone. His declaration cut through the air, landing squarely on Jia Rong's ears, sending shivers down his spine. It's not about recovering your soul power, he sneered, his eyes glinting with a sharp, calculating light. It's about making you a real first-tier alchemist. Jia Rong felt a lump form in his throat as he swallowed hard, his heart pounding with uncertainty. What do you need from me so that you can help me? He managed to stammer out, his voice trembling with a mixture of fear and curiosity. Be my servant. Yun Xiao's words struck like a bolt of lightning sending a surge of indignation coursing through Jia Rong's veins. Impossible, he retorted angrily, his pupils dilating with disbelief. You're just an ignorant kid, and yet you want to make an alchemist your servant. How arrogant. Yun Xiao remained composed, his posture relaxed as he sat quietly on the stairs. An aura of natural authority surrounded him, emanating an air of superiority. With a hint of disdain in his eyes, he spoke coldly, if it wasn't for my lack of strength right now, do you think you are qualified to be my servant? Even so, you are only qualified to be my servant for 50 days. After that, I want you to get out of my sight. Jia Rong's mind reeled with shock, his thoughts spinning in confusion. Yun Xiao's words had left him speechless, his head swimming with a mix of disbelief and apprehension. Oh heavens, what the hell is going on? He thought frantically. Who is this brat? A lunatic? But, if he's a lunatic, how is he able to tell my problem with just a glance, and even has a way to solve it? I've searched through the whole Alchemist's Association, but couldn't find a solution. Yun Xiao's faint voice cut through Jia Rong's tumultuous thoughts. Do you feel aggrieved about being my servant? He asked, his tone almost mocking. What rubbish, of course I feel aggrieved. Jia Rong seethed inwardly, his mind racing with frustration and indignation. But before he could voice his protest, a strange golden light suddenly flashed in Yun Xiao's eyes, causing Jia Rong's heart to skip a beat. As Jia Rong's eyes widened in terror, he felt an overwhelming fear gripping his soul, as if he stood in the presence of a deity. His body trembled uncontrollably, and his legs gave out beneath him, collapsing onto the hard blue stone floor. Cold sweat coated his skin, and a weight pressed down on his very essence, preventing him from lifting his head or even uttering a word. The sheer magnitude of the sensation left Jia Rong bewildered and terrified. How could a mere teenager exude such an imposing aura, one that seemed to emanate from the depths of his soul? Questions raced through his mind, but there were no answers to be found. The disdainful gaze of Yun Xiao pierced through him, leaving him feeling utterly insignificant, as if his very soul lay bare before this enigmatic figure. Yun Xiao's voice cut through the chaos of Jia Rong's thoughts, offering him a choice three breaths to decide his fate. The weight of the decision hung heavy in the air. Acceptance could lead to great heights, while refusal might result in a lifetime of regret. It was a pivotal moment, one that would shape the course of Jia Rong's existence. Summoning every ounce of resolve, Jia Rong clenched his teeth and made his decision. I'm willing, he managed to choke out, the words carrying the weight of his fate. But as soon as the declaration left his lips, a wave of relief washed over him and he collapsed in exhaustion, drained by the ordeal. Yun Xiao's eyes glinted with satisfaction at Jia Rong's response. Not bad, he remarked, a hint of approval in his tone. Your decisiveness will serve you well. With a sense of finality, Yun Xiao acknowledged Jia Rong's acceptance, cementing their newfound relationship. Now that you have recognized me as your master, he declared, I'll naturally not mistreat you. Yun Xiao's command echoed through the room as he flicked his finger, sending a sheet of paper gliding towards Jia Rong. The paper fluttered in the air before landing gracefully in Jia Rong's hands. With trembling fingers, Jia Rong unfolded the paper, his eyes widening in shock as he read the contents. The instructions on the paper detailed a soul cultivation technique. Jia Rong couldn't believe his eyes. A soul cultivation technique was rare and immensely valuable. 
It was a method to enhance one's spiritual power, a crucial aspect for alchemists. Jia Rong's heart raced with excitement as he realized the potential this technique held for him. Yun Xiao's voice cut through Jia Rong's reverie, dismissing the technique as trashy. However, he assured Jia Rong that despite its humble origins, the technique was sufficient to elevate him to the coveted rank of a first-tier alchemist within a mere five days. This revelation sent a surge of hope and determination coursing through Jia Rong's veins. Overwhelmed with gratitude, Jia Rong addressed Yun Xiao respectfully as master, expressing disbelief at the incredible opportunity before him. Yun Xiao corrected him, insisting on being called Young Master Yun. Despite the humbleness of the soul cultivation technique, Yun Xiao promised ample rewards for faithful service. With a newfound sense of purpose, Jia Rong carefully stowed away the precious paper in an exquisite jade box before tucking it into his storage ring. He bowed deeply to young Master Yun, his heart brimming with gratitude and determination. With a final farewell, he departed, his mind racing with anticipation for the transformation that awaited him. As Jia Rong left the academy, he felt a sense of elation and wonder at the unexpected turn of events. The sky above seemed clearer, the sun brighter, and his heart brimmed with joy and excitement. The encounter with young Master Yun had left him with a whirlwind of thoughts racing through his mind. He pondered over the mysterious figure of young Master Yun. Who is this young Master Yun? How could he have employed such a potent technique on me? Jia Rong mused. As an alchemist, he was well versed in the arts of the mind and soul, and he couldn't shake off the feeling of being manipulated. The revelation of the soul cultivating technique left Jia Rong astounded. In the world of alchemy, where the soul's power was paramount, such a technique was considered invaluable. It was unheard of for someone to possess such knowledge, let alone offer it freely. Jia Rong couldn't help but feel a sense of disbelief and gratitude at his unexpected fortune. With cautious steps, Jia Rong made his way back to the alchemist's tower, all the while concealing the precious knowledge he had obtained. Despite his excitement, he knew the importance of keeping such information hidden, especially in the competitive world of alchemy.